Hello, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Miguel, uh, Miguel Angel Tarango. I'm your professor for the uh, uh, RTVF uh, 131 or FTVM 131 uh, for digital editing uh, and the introduction to, uh, uh, in this course, it'll be an introduction to Adobe Premiere Pro. And I will be working on the Macintosh platform. I am running the latest version of, of the Mac platform. Um, uh, which I believe this is High Sierra now, or no, I'm in Catalina, which is 10.15.5. Uh, That's what I'm running uh, as of today. So um, just to, to give you a frame of reference, the uh, instruction uh, should be similar to, for some of you, uh, whether you're running on a Mac or PC. Again, since uh, uh, I don't have access to a PC and uh, I haven't used, personally I haven't used a PC in years, um, my philosophy has been the very similar. I just happen to be uh, a Mac person because I worked for Apple for, many, for several years and I've had small businesses where I've supported the Mac platform and the software and hardware. Uh, that's just where my background came. And uh, uh, because uh, when I was uh, coming of age uh, in this uh, field, the Apple, uh, Apple as a company was the company that favored uh, creatives and, and people that were more interested in, in the creative arts uh, and, and digital art itself. So um, it was sort of by default, you went Mac. If you're a you know, finance person, uh, if you were a um, like business, um, that you were a PC uh, and you did all, you know, office based, uh, you did that. But I mean, we have all that on the Mac as well. Um, the, uh, and really it's just a matter of preference. They're both based on philosophies of logic. So you can use either platform, either one works in a very similar fashion. And what you're gonna see today also is uh, as I'm working in the Mac, um, again, the Mac centric platform, um, I'm gonna be you, you showing you uh, Finder Windows, which I believe are gonna be similar to Windows Explorer Windows. They, they'll work similarly. Um, so, uh, for those of you on those platforms, you might have to look up a few YouTube videos, maybe just on, on uh, to get some advice on some workflow options and organization. But the way that you make folders will be similar. It's, it's all under the uh, file new uh, subheadings or submenus, which are inside the little windows. Um, and and you na the naming conventions are gonna be the same. So organization is the same, naming conventions are the same, the way the folders will look will be the same. And once we get into Premiere Pro, it'll be uh, the same. The big differences will be the shortcuts. They'll have their own unique um, uh, modifier keys and modifier keys are the shift, control, option, and command on the Mac. Um, PC, I think calls it alt, A-L-T, some weird word. I don't know what they use, uh, but uh, uh, just keep that in mind. Those are gonna be the major differences between the two, but um, the step-by-step uh, -step uh, aspect will, will be the same and uh, they're pretty interchangeable. And uh, those of you who have looked at YouTube videos, you'll, you'll see that they're like, yeah, they, they work pretty much the same when it comes down to working inside of it. Um, now organization is very, very important. Um, I always begin my lectures on editing by saying that, um, you know, I do believe that organization is uh, at least 60% or let's say editing is 60% organization. And like, well, why 60%? Well, it's not really a very a specific science or very specific, um, uh, um, let's say pedantic number or exact number. Uh, I just like to say 60% because it's more than half to, to just indicate how important organization is. It's so important. And, and really, if you think about editing, you know, um, I, I, we talked about editing in the other lecture uh, using the text in terms of what is it, you know, how do we define it? And that's the joining of clips. And if we get into more specific definitions, it's the joining of clips to tell a story or to create a new form from those clips of, of something. Um, so really, uh, I mean, uh, the, the editing itself, I mean, it doesn't really matter per se in terms of, you know, again, which platform, because uh, again, the, it, it it's sort of uh, the definition itself goes beyond just that, you know, remember editing originally uh, was a very physical act. It was uh, very similar to sewing, which is why the first editors for many years were women. 
And it wasn't until the academy or, uh, yeah, the academy that, uh, you know, was uh, given out the Oscars when they presented an, uh, or decided to present an award for editing. That's when men became interested and that's when men really got involved because they said, well, that's men's work because now it's important enough to get an award. Well, let's get men in there. Because they used to think um, for editing, they thought, well, we'll hire women because we're just stitching things together. We're putting them together like sewing and who is good at sewing again in the, if we're talking about um, almost a hundred years ago, well, that was considered women's work because women were uh, the, um, the masters of the domestic domain, if you will. You know, men would be uh, working away from home. Women would work in the home. Uh, and that's, a, that's just the way things were back then. Uh, not so much now, but again, that's just the way they were. Um, and and what, what we're doing is right now, we're just talking about sort of the history. We're just saying that's the way they were. Does it mean they were right? No, it doesn't mean they were right. We're just acknowledging that that's the way they were. And I think there's, there's, um, there's something to celebrate at the very least uh, in terms of, well, if this is women's work, you know, I mean, at the same time we say, hell yeah, you know, because women, as we know, are equal and um, women's work is not to be demeaned, but to be celebrated. So, I mean, I'm, I'm all for it. Why not? Women's work, sure. Hopefully I'm good enough to do it. <laughs> that, that's the way I like to think about it. So, um, as I mentioned, uh, the way I'm going to show you uh, when I start with the organization is I'm going to go into a finder window on the Mac, but keep in mind that the organization will be the same and you can choose, uh, at least on the Windows platform, you're just going to be using Explore. That's going to be the main difference. So let's start taking a look at how do we get our footage from a memory card first onto our computer. So we'll start with that. So let's share the screen. We're going to look at Finder. Here we go. All right. So I'm looking at Finder, and this is called a sidebar on the Mac. And this used to be the, um, uh, these were like menu bars or uh, sub bars. The menu bar is actually the one, um, if my mouse disappears, I'm going to the top, up at the top of the bar, right? That has, you know, uh, your, for Mac, it says, um, you know, the, the little Apple symbol, the name of the application. And then usually it's file, edit, and then whatever after that, whatever software you're using, it'll change. And sometimes it's just view, uh, but it'll change depending um, on whatever software you're using to be specific to that software. Now, uh, the menu bar, interchangeable. So the sidebar right over here though, I see the, this uh, word, it says untitled. Well, that's just because that's the way the memory card was formatted by the camera. What I'm gonna show you then specifically to is a format that comes from Sony, Sony cameras. Those are the cameras that we have in our program as of uh, 2020 in um, uh, San Bernardino Valley Community College. Uh, but I, what I want you to notice is, or think about is, well, with a little bit of sleuthing and detective work on your part, or in other words, exploring the files. So don't be afraid to look, click on, you know, at least the folders to look inside of them. Um, when we look in the folders, what we see is well, we, we can find the content. Without looking inside, you're not gonna be able to find the content. Um, in fact, that's the way I found it. I know when I was first looking, I was like, well, where's all my stuff? And you know, no one really tells you, you just kind of, I know when I was learning, you just had to figure it out. So don't be afraid to look. So uh, here's my uh, memory card. And the first thing I see is something called private. I mean, if you look at that right away, you're like, well, private, I mean, I don't wanna go in there. That's just the way it's formatted. We double click that. We're gonna get these three uh, files right here. AVCHD or AVCAD, uh, M4 root and Sony. Sony, uh, again, this is uh, the, to show you the folder is created by the camera. There's nothing inside of it. So we won't have to worry about that. Um, uh, so uh, a few years ago, the first HD cameras we're using a codec and codec is short for compression, decompression. Those, those were the, uh, the way, it, it's a type of um, a file format that um, computers used to understand video files. Compressed files that were then decompressed by the computer. ABCHD just represents uh, that method of, of compression. Uh, which uh, was a lower resolution HD format, but um, you know, pretty good. I mean, it's what we use, but uh, we don't use that anymore necessarily unless uh, we forget to change the settings on our camera. 
because really uh, in cinematography, you'll learn that you can go in, change the settings, and you're going to change it from AVCHD, hopefully, to XAVCS in the Sony's. And there are other formats that you can use uh, if you're using the um, Amira's or the uh, FS7s. You can uh, actually, I'm not sure about the Sony FS7, but uh, I know in the Amira, you can record onto a ProRes, or if you're any of you using Blackmagic, you can go right into ProRes, Apple ProRes codec, which is one I'd recommend. Um, even if you're shooting on a piece or you know you're going to be edit or let's say shooting on a camera. Sorry about that. But if you know you're going to be editing, not shooting, editing on a PC, uh, Apple ProRes will work just fine because it's just referring to the file itself. And, and the, that particular codec, the ProRes codec, has been adopted by Adobe and Avid as well. Uh, it originally was designed to work for Final Cut Pro 1 through 7. Uh, when it first came out and um, in the early 2000s uh, when Apple moved to Final Cut Pro 10 and their new interface and their new UI, which is really a 64-bit system. And that's what happened. Apple went from a 32-bit operational system to a 64-bit operational system. That's when they redesigned all of um, Final Cut Pro. And uh, many pro editors who were expert at 7 uh, when they went to 10, they found that, whoa, it's completely different. Many of them poo-pooed it immediately. And it's really, and they poo-pooed it uh, two, for two reasons, I would say, at least. Um, one was legitimately, yes, there were some uh, functions that were removed from Final Cut Pro 10 that were in 7, specifically with file sharing and being able to work on servers. Uh, because Final Cut 7 was making inroads in, uh, out here, you know, in LA and Hollywood with more production houses using it because it was inexpensive and it worked just, this was an amazing piece of software to run on Mac computers. It just ran so well. And it also came with the Cinema Tools uh, app, which would prepare your files for digital, uh, from digital to uh, film for print. Uh, so it helped, uh, again, Apple was very, um, uh, aware of that situation and they made software to support filmmakers. When they moved to 10, they removed a lot of that support, they removed network support, and they sort of uh, designed their um, application for USB media or, um, and now it's Thunderbolt, but at the time it was USB media or, um, you know, these things, uh, memory cards, you know, because of everything we were doing back in the day, you know, we went to memory cards. Um, Back in the day, we were using tapes. So the old systems from Avid, a uh, little bit of Avid, uh, but Final Cut Pro for sure and Premiere Pro, um, they were uh, um, tape-based. So they were uh, designed around uh, importing content in real time. In fact, the uh, menu for Premiere Pro still um, has the... Um, uh, the system on it, which uh, the first screens you see are there, are there in sort of in a way uh, in support of um, Premiere Pro. It's kind of really interesting, or I'm sorry, not Premiere Pro, but in tape-based systems. So when you see some of that, you, the first few screens, uh, once we get to the top and I, I take you through how to import your or ingest your content, um, you're going to notice I'm going to skip the bottom two options right away. And, and um, when we get there, I'll show it to you. Okay. So Back in the day, uh, all of our footage would be stuck in AVCAD. And just to show you, if I uh, do a right click on this, I could do something called show package contents and I'll get this BDMV and then I can open that and get a more folder system. We would find our video clips inside of stream. But again, that's a very clunky way of doing it, right? I mean, we don't want to continuously open this weird package, you know. Um, now a package is, uh, is, is something that comes from Linux uh, and uh, the Linux systems. It's just a very effective way of incorporating all of your media and transferring your media as a bundle, okay? Um, and that's, it's really just for organization, um, but you have to be able to access it so, uh, or understand that you have to access it. The way that they're designed is bundles. They're not meant to sort of be op uh, accessed individually, but it's designed more to be open in a piece of software. So it is kind of being user-centric, and personally, I mean, um, the way I kind of put two and two together and connect the dots, this is a, f a version of AI, you know, the art artificial intelligence 
trying to make organization a little bit uh, easier for us so we don't have to kind of get stuck in all this, making sure we have all of our files uh, set up. Um, now, Premiere Pro doesn't do any of that. So part of today's demo will be, how do I organize my content uh, in the most effective way? So for our purposes, we shot our documentary and what I'm gonna do is share files with you that I, that I shot uh, on my documentary in uh, Iowa. And um, uh, I'm gonna show you the, uh, the file structure, how to make the file structure, import that into Premiere Pro, do some organization, create some sub clips, create sequences, organize some of the clips in there, and then export out. So we're gonna basically do everything that probably would be project one. So in our case, we're gonna open up M4 root, and we're gonna get these uh, uh, files. Now, different cameras are slightly different, so you might um, wanna look through the, um, your manual on your camera or do a Google search to find out where those clips reside if you're not using a Sony. Now, if I look at mine, um, the first place I'm gonna look is something called clip, because that makes sense to me. And lo and behold, there they are. Those are all my video clips. Now, what I like to do when I'm looking in my files, um, I like to change the look. And in the Mac, we have four different types of view options. Icon view, list view, column, and um, uh, a type of uh, cover flow. So this is icon view, which is fine. And uh, we do have a sidebar here or a little bar that, where we can make our files bigger. Now it's pretty neat because I can play my Cut it down. At the inside just like that. So I can watch my video clips. Now the reason I can watch my video clips is because the Apple system does have in, in its main operating system, the, uh, the codec to read video files in QuickTime. Uh, this, if, depending on your machine, you may not have that option. Uh, for many years, I wasn't able to do that. So if, if you find you have limitations, don't worry. Uh, you can use uh, Adobe Premiere in media browser to look at your files. So we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and if you also notice inside of this uh, folder, I also have these XML files. Well, that's what's called metadata. And meta, I mean, those of you who know the, the word meta, you use it all the time in your language. Um, it's the same thing. Now, this is where you try to figure out, well, do I really know what the word meta means? <laughs> well, meta means many, right, or more. And, and that just means more data. So metadata is providing information on the clips that would be relevant to Premiere Pro, uh, and Premiere Pro can read that content and, and uh, apply necessary adjustments to the media that's being ingested. That's really all metadata is. It's just giving additional information about the files. Um, now, uh, uh, this again, I mentioned this is icon view. Let me click the next one. This is called list view. If you're on a PC, this will be very familiar. And it works just the same way. I can scroll on the Mac. I can scroll if I have more of these uh, little uh, uh, bars up here. So th this works very much like an Excel spreadsheet. They're just in columns. And if I click on each one, See, it'll change the sorting either by date. Now, sometimes I just like to use kind because when I click kind, it's gonna sort all my files into my MP4 movies and my XML documents. Notice if I go back to something like column view, it goes back to a uh, organization based on alphanumeric and ascending order. So it goes in order based on your alpha or your numeric. And the last one here is called cover flow which allows me to uh, pick my files and it shows, see here's that metadata and here's my video files. And if I wanna see them, I can push play and watch I'm ready. Them. But also sort of get the seat. And there we go. Just to show you some, I just push play. That's one of the things I touch. Files. All right. So you might think like, what kind of documentary are you making, you know, based on a bus driver? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna do column view because that's the one I like. Or I also like using uh, this list view because it makes it easy for me to find my files. Now I've already pre-selected these two files here. And uh, what I'm gonna do on the Mac, I have the ability to create tabs. Um, modern Macs in the last, every, any Mac made in the last um, 10 years will have the ability to, to have what's called a tab. And you do that, by uh, going to file and doing new tab. And here we go, that's a tab right here. 
and notice then this is where I was, but now I have this other tab which uh, works or functions very similarly to a, um, a web browser. So what I'm gonna do now is go to desktop. And what I've done already is created a couple of folders here and I did it for the demo purposes. So um, this particular uh, file, if I go to Sony A6300 files, I'll see that I already have a bunch that I've already named. Now, if I go to this one, A6000, uh, this is the way I sometimes like to organize my files. I will name them or my folders, excuse me, because these are folders. Folders are containers. That's a very important distinction too between, um, oh, there we go, sorry about that. Let me, apparently it, uh, the sharing pause because of the different browser. Um, I'll fix that in a second. Um, the, uh, the difference between a file and a folder is uh, unique in that folders are containers, you put stuff in, files are the functionality. Files are what, um, are what you make or create, okay, like video, audio, uh, office, those are all files. So that's the difference between the two. And what I'm gonna do then is, uh, I've, I've uh, put these two uh, files here. I selected both of them by clicking on the first one, hold shift, I'll do it again. Click first one, hold shift, and I click my second one. And that creates a grouping, okay? I have them both selected. And if you notice, I've let go of shift and they're still selected. I, at this point, I, I just very uh, carefully uh, click on the first one here, the video clip, click and drag. Let's do this. And I'm gonna drag and drop this on top of my Sony A6000 because it's gonna put it inside that folder automatically. And it might, I believe this might have paused. Let's put it back, here we go. Um, so uh, I'll just show it to you all, here we go drag and drop. And now my folder, my files are copied inside that folder. I'm gonna close that clip. And I think it went away. Let's go ahead and share screen again so I can show you what happened here. So share. Um, back to sharing, Sony A6000. Those are the two files that I just shared. And there they are inside. Once I'm inside my folder, um, I can continue my organization. And this is, a, again, a very important aspect. And, and the thing is, that's also how I, I ingest my files. Um, and this is a different uh, type of language. If you notice, I keep saying the word ingest versus import uh, because importing in uh, media, or at least in video editing, importing is when we bring in our data in real time. And we used to do that via the DV tapes or HDV tapes or uh, Betacam tapes. Um, typically the way we did that all through the 90s and early 2000s. Um, but now, since we're shooting a, uh, either on solid state drives uh, or media cards of some kind, that's called ingesting. And that's moving data from one volume onto another volume. Volume is just another phrase for uh, media card, hard drive, uh, USB stick, external hard drive, et cetera, et cetera. A volume is basically that, another container, right? A volume is a container. So uh, volumes, uh, if any of you have ever done any kind of tech work, you'll see like, oh yeah, that's a volume is something that is, a, that's what the hard drives are called before we format them. Okay. Yep, that's right. All right, now, once I put my files inside, um, especially when I look at this, I go, okay, that's Jack in the bus, here in the bus seat, so I will go ahead and rename that immediately because I can I can take advantage of the fact that um, um, I can rename all of my my files, my video files, and start my organization. So I'm going to do that immediately. So I'm going to call that Jack starts the bus. Enter, and um, so that's what he does in this one. And if I look at this one, this next file, um, this next file is. Just, uh, I believe it's just uh, when I was shooting, getting ready for movement. So I'm just gonna change the name of this file. Now, if you're on a Mac, notice I did, I, I did mention how I did, I did it really quick. But what I'll do is if I select a file, it's highlighted. If I click on the text one more time, but I don't double click quick, I just click once, pause, tap again, notice I get the highlight and 
I'm not clicking on anything. Very important. I call that being, you know, click happy or being a little mouse monkey when you click on things very quickly. Let's, let's be calm and not do that because more clicks mean more mistakes. So let's take it nice and slow. I had noticed though, my text is highlighted every, any time, every time in any type of computer, Mac, Linux, Windows, anytime I see that highlighted, I don't have to hit delete or nothing. I can just start typing. If you're more comfortable hitting delete, you can do that. Look, delete. All the text goes away and I can just type. So I'm just going to call this uh, um, Master Shot Bus Depot because that's what I was doing. And I did that all in all caps because it's like a master shot. So it's really up to you. Now, maybe I don't want to do that. I'll just do Master. And I'm going to remove Shot because that's I know what it is. So I'll say Master Bus Depot, just like that. I don't have to do .mp4 or anything because that's that .mp4, if you don't know, that's called an extension. Anytime a dot something with the three letters or no, letters and numbers, that's an extension. I'll leave that alone. Um, we're at the point now where most of our computers in the operating systems can read a file without needing that extension. Uh, but I, you know, again, I'm old school. I leave it alone. Once I'm happy with my name, I just hit return and there it is and it's taken it. So I've already named my files and they're already in the folder nice and organized. Now, do I grab that file and throw it into my project? Not yet, or into my uh, editing software? Not quite yet, because the name of the game here is complete organization. Notice though, right above these two Sony uh, files, or folders, excuse me, there I am getting confused. I have something called, that says Iowa Documentary. What I'm gonna do though, is a second ago, as I showed you guys, A6300. I'm gonna click on that again and show you that, look at this, I have all of these files already uh, renamed. Let's open up so you guys can see what they look like. Whoop, we don't wanna do that. See, that was the double click or it's actually a single click. I'm just pressed too hard. I'm not used to this Mac yet. But I have, um, why do I have these here? Oh yeah, I'm not using those files. So I have the first one is called Jack S. Civil War Wardrobe. Second one, Jack S. Lion's Wardrobe. Jack S. Trumpet 1, Jack S. Trumpet 2, Judy S. Part 1, Judy S. Part 2. So these are all uh, indicative of my uh, uh, files. And if you're on a Mac, you guys will see this. The duration is listed. So this is a four minute file. Lion's Wardrobe is 343. Trumpet 1 is four minutes. And what that means is four minutes, 17 seconds. Trumpet 2, three minutes, 25 seconds. Part 1. 28 minutes, 33 seconds, part two, 12 minutes and one second. And this was just one interview that we did for this particular documentary. Um, and see, there you go. I have made all of it already organized, or at least with the titles. And the, the reason why we do that is because Adobe Premiere will recognize those titles when we bring them in. So I don't have to rename them inside of Premiere. Um, and the reason why we do that is uh, now you don't always have to do that. And sometimes I don't, it depends. Um, if you just bring it into Premiere with this C001, C002, that name came directly from uh, the camera that I was using. Now that naming um, will come into Premiere. However, once it's inside of Premiere, I can rename it anything I want. Well, you might think, well, why don't we just do that? Well, the reason why we just don't do that is because if I name it in Premiere, it will not name it out here in your Mac operating system or your PC operating system. It only does it within the software. So if I quit Adobe Premiere um, and I come back to look at my, my files, and I go, okay, I want to look for my uh, Jack in the Lion's wardrobe. I'm just going to find a bunch of uh, folders that are named the way that the camera named them. So that's, I'm gonna be SOL at that point. And it's like, oh no, well, I have to go and look at all my files all over again. So that's all this does is this keeps us ahead of the game. It keeps us organized. The more that we organize on these bigger shows, um, especially when we get into features, it's gonna be a lot more helpful. If we do this renaming, um, what's really cool if we're using other software like Final Cut Pro, <laughs> um, the new Final Cut Pro 10, Final Cut Pro 10 will take the names and create what are called uh, keywords. And the keywords in Final Cut Pro work 
exactly like they do in your operating system. They become uh, searchable. It becomes another way to search your content, which is really, really cool. And that's just one of the advantages of using Final Cut Pro 10. Um, now for me, I do tend to use Final Cut Pro 10 for documentary more and more. Um, and I like to use Premiere Pro for uh, different types of multicam projects and uh, kind of complicated feature shots, feature shoots. Um, I, again, it's, and it's really a matter of preference. Um, I, it used to be that I liked using Final Cut Pro 10 for shows that were under 15 minutes. So that was like a lot of the work that I was doing for the la for about five years. Um, I, cause I was, I love doing these short, uh, sort of business profiles and artist interviews. And this is especially when I was in Colorado. Uh, but now that I'm the, doing longer documentary stuff and, um, this one is going to be a feature, you know, um, I'm, you know, I might want to use Premiere Pro, but uh, even myself, I'm, I just noticed I'm really liking Final Cut Pro 10's ability to use keywords more and more and more. Um, now, in our case, since we are, I mentioned this in the other lecture, since we are limited in our discussion, um, we're going to focus on Premiere Pro in this course. At the same time, Premiere Pro does have a broader user base right here in Hollywood and LA. So that's useful for many people. Um, again, I have no problem doing either one. And you know, for most editors, they usually don't. Um, those of us that are really uh, understand or have a high digital literacy or understand how computers work, they should be pretty interchangeable for many of you. Okay, now, once I've uh, moved my data from the media card to my folder, which I just did. Now I go one step further and start to create my organizational folders for my entire show. So that's what I did here with Iowa documentary. I'm going to click on that now and show you, this is what I've done. I have a folder for my audio. I have a folder for documents. Now inside of documents, I have my paperwork for insurance can go in there. Any scripts can go in here and talent release forms can go inside of there. And, and if, remember, I can create more, you know, subfolders inside of those as well. Uh, this is just really for your own edification, for your own purposes, for uh, whatever organization that works for your particular show. Now, I'm doing this as an independent producer, so this organizational scheme works for that. You might find a different type of organization if you're on a LAN of some kind or a, a local access network or you're working on a show with other assistant editors. It could be a little bit different. But just know that this, ed this uh, type of organization is kind of standard. And even in here, I did audio. I have my Zoom recorder because that's what I'm using. In our program, we use those as well. And I already have all my audio. Look at that inside. Um, I also uh, just, just like the um, uh, video, you can go in and create or rename by hitting enter the audio files, or let me undo that, click again, um, and name those to, uh, so that it'll be easier to associate those audio files with the clips that you shot. Um, now, when I do my documentary, I always uh, sync up my video and my audio in terms of at least how I'm recording, you know, my sound person. Um, so this way we're always, you know, on the same page. So when I merge my clips, it's, it's, uh, it's a little easier. Um, now that's something that we'll do uh, in the next demos coming up. For now, we're not going to merge clips. So we're not, I'm not worried about that yet. I also have a folder called finals or exports because when I'm finished with my show and premiere, this is where they're, they'll go, the exporting. I also have a folder for Photoshop's because I can create titles in there and maybe I put them in there. Uh, for some people, uh, they might just create one folder called stills and then pr Photoshop can be a subfolder of that. It's going to be completely up to you at that point because uh, some people also use Illustrator for vector files. Again, it's personal preference. Notice I have my Premiere Pro folder. This is the folder that I will be selecting when I go into my Premiere Pro uh, setup screen. I also have inside of that something for proxies. Proxies are files that are generated by Media Composer, another Adobe software uh, that allow maybe computers that don't have a, a big graphics card um, or faster processor, um, not enough RAM, not enough hard drive space, et cetera, et cetera. Or maybe you have an older computer. 
in my case, that that's I kept running into that problem. Uh, my I was editing most of my uh, professional content actually on a 2008 Mac Pro, and I uh, you know at the time, let's say even in 2015, 2016, I mean my machine was at least seven, eight years old, and now I mean we're talking 12 years. Um, and uh, only recently did I get a new computer. So I had to create proxies of all my HD 4K footage, uh, again, because my computer couldn't run those huge files. I had to create small versions of them. And that's what proxies are. They're smaller versions of our massive files so that we can run them on our, um, maybe our uh, consumer computer. Like maybe I only have a MacBook Air. Some of you are gonna use Chromebooks, so you might need to do that. Um, so that's gonna be part of our workflow. And uh, the files are gonna go in there and uh, I'll show you how to set all that up in just a second. Um, stills, again, I mentioned that earlier, that can be maybe photographs I've done, Photoshop or Illustrator files. Titles, um, so again, I, I might use After Effects, Motion, or maybe I have um, uh, hired someone to create titles for me so I can put them all inside of here. Video then, this is where I put my video from my camera that I shot. So let's do that now as a demo. Um, I'm going to grab 6,300 files. I'm going to press and hold, drag and drop. I'm holding and on top of that folder and it opened it up to show me all my files. And notice then as long as I'm selecting it, I just move it over and I let go. And it just moved it just like that. Now, once it's open like this, it makes it easy because I just, all I have to do is move this file over to video into the column. That's all I need to do. Makes it a lot easier. So I just drag it over. Just let me show you drag and drop oh and moved it away so sometimes it'll do that so just press and hold just don't let go the name of the game is don't panic well there you go i accidentally let go always breathe remember this is the big lesson <sighs> breathe in through your nose out through your mouth or if you practice yoga in and out through your nose so let's go to video see as long as it's highlighted let go boom there we go just like that just don't panic if it accidentally fell maybe in stills or is outside. So let's say I did something like this, like, whoops, it's in stills. Well, don't worry. I can always use two hands if I need to, you know, select with one, press with the other and drag with my other finger. Again, I'm pointing to the folder. And then I let go. There it is. So they're both inside. Um, so the next thing we're going to do now is ingest this content inside of Premiere Pro. So let's do that now. I'm going to bring up Premiere Pro. Now you can't see that. So what I have to do is stop sharing the finder window. And now we're going to share uh, Premiere Pro. To do this, um, uh, you won't be able to see this part, but when I launch Premiere Pro, um, I'm going to have a window and one of them will say um, new project or open project. And what I'm going to do is click on new project. Okay. Once I click new project, now I can show you the screen. So let's do that now. Share. And when I do new project, here we go. Here's the screen I'm going to see. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that the uh, Premiere Pro still has its roots in uh, importing um, real-time uh, DV files. That's what this stuff is done here, video, audio, capture. So there you go, capture format, HDV. Uh, it's already got that selected. Let's just not worry about that. And But at the same time, it works great. Um, it works no problem. I've, I've recently been importing some old DV files and uh, no problem, works just fine. And, and I mean, not even HDV files, these were DV, this is standard definition. Um, because I, I'm also uh, directing some behind the scenes uh, documentary for some DVDs that I'm making from some old public domain horror movies that I'm releasing with a producer uh, in Redlands. So yeah, it works great. And this option is also available in Final Cut Pro 10 for those of you that are using that or have used that in the past. So. I like to start from the top uh, and work our way to the bottom. So let's start with name. So let's say uh, this, this is my documentary on Iowa. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to delete that. Again, I can just highlight it and just start typing. I'm going to call this the bus driver. So that's sort of the name of the project. Um, how many times have we 
you know, started working on a show, maybe a documentary we don't know. Well, you can always call it the bus driver project, or you could call it untitled bus driver project. So I'm just going to say bus driver to make it easy. Now, this is very important. We look at location. Very important. Very important. Do not hit OK because we're not done yet. We still have a few things to go through. Um, some of you are going to screw up and hit OK. I know that. Everyone does that. Location. This is very important because we have to know where our content is. And that's, again, the, the name of the game at this point. You want to become a professional. You have to be able to know where your content is. So we got to control that. And that's what it is about. That's what it is about editing. That's it's all about controlling the media. So if I look at location, I see users slash Miguel Tarango slash documents slash Adobe slash Premiere slash 14.0. What does that mean? You don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Or more importantly, I don't care what that means. But what I do know is I have a folder on my desktop that I made it, that I made. That's where I want my stuff organized. Well, guess what? I can also, if I want, um, store my media on an external hard drive. Um, I, I showed some of you my, um, oh, I'm actually connected, I can't show you, but I, I showed you my uh, hard drive, my solid state hard drive. Well, those solid state hard drives are fast enough to edit 4K on even. So you don't have to save your content on your local drive, you can save it on that external. Um, we also have hard drives at school, the GTEC drives, uh, those are fast enough to also edit off. Of. So I'm gonna click the word browse and I'm going to get this little window. Um, now, you may not see the window, unfortunately, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the word desktop. I'm going to click the word Iowa documentary. Remember, I showed that to you earlier. And I'm going to go right into my Premiere Pro folder. Remember, I showed you that earlier, Premiere Pro folder. And I'm going to click choose. So what that means is, and I'm going to show you here. Now it says Miguel Tarango desktop Iowa documentary Premiere Pro. Those are, that's the folder I made earlier. And now with that folder, all my content, all the folders and files that Premiere creates as a result of ingesting the content and manipulating the content, creating render files and all the files that it makes, they're all gonna go in that particular uh, folder. And that's what we want. We want all the content to go inside there so that if I ever need to move this project to another computer, I just have to move the one folder called Iowa documentary. Again, here it is, Iowa documentary. That's kind of the root folder. As long as I move that, that's gonna take everything with it. It's gonna take my video files that I shot, my audio files, my stills, my documents, my scripts, my talent release forms, everything. So it's kind of like taking the whole project with you. So that's why this, I've spent almost 40 minutes talking about organization is so important. We wanna keep all of our content together. Notice I haven't even gone down here at all. So before I continue, the next thing I, I, I always like to talk about is video rendering and playback. I wanna talk about this before anything else um, uh, because sometimes it gets lost. Now, uh, if I click on this little drop down menu, this little triangle, it's, this is called a disclosure triangle, by the way. Notice I have three options. I have Mercury Playback Engine from Metal, Mercury playback uh, GP, when it's GPU graphic processor uh, um, unit, uh, the acceleration can be OpenCL. Um, now OpenCL is an older uh, video codec or uh, video render uh, the, that came from older cards. This, uh, I believe it had its root it's in Microsoft, uh, well, something that was called um, OpenX. Was it OpenX? Ah, see, I can't remember. Over, we're talking about 10 years, 15 year technology. Who cares? It's over. We use metal now. If you do not have metal, like my 2008 Mac does not have metal. That was introduced, I believe, five or six years ago. Choose OpenCL. Only if you don't have those two options do you do the, the software only rendering. What that means then is that Premiere Pro is going to rely on your hard drive and your processor to, to do all of its video file rendering that's gonna make your computer pretty slow. So we wanna choose metal because that means then that our computer has a graphic unit or graphic processor inside of it that'll do all of our videos for us and it will free up our main processor to work Premiere to do everything else. And that's gonna optimize our machine. So we're gonna choose metal. And that's all I really wanted to do. Now let's go to scratch disk. The language scratch disk 
again, the old school term that comes from the, uh, the hard drives that were used um, to offload files. And, and if you notice, uh, Premiere already knows, for the most part, our scratch disk is gonna be same as project. See our captured video, captured audio, and this is our referencing back that old school uh, digital video importing. This is why it says captured video audio. We're, we don't have to worry about that. However, video previews, audio previews, project auto saves, uh, create, uh, not Creative Commons, uh, Creative Cloud library downloads, and motion graphic template media, all of this stuff down here, that, that does get generated uh, as we edit. And uh, we put that, uh, again, we want all of that organized very nicely inside of our uh, folders that we created. Because again, if we move it, we want it to go with it. So we just want to make sure it says same as project. See, so we have different um, options. We can customize it, but um, same as project. Why do I make you look at this? Well, because sometimes some students like to mess with other students and they'll change the settings. And uh, especially if you're a student who doesn't have the experience, your stuff is getting saved all over the place. And when it comes down for you to say, you know, maybe you want to render something out or you want to continue editing, you're going to get an error that says, can't find some files. You're like, where were they? And it's because someone, you know, or maybe they customize it to their own. That's another option. So just be sure to look at this and just be sure to select same as project so that it goes to your new project. Because when I hit okay, it's gonna to go to the new one. Now we wanna look at ingest settings. Remember ingesting is when we bring in uh, media from one volume to another. Um, I'm gonna click ingest because what I wanna talk about quickly is not just copying, because I don't need to copy anything. I've already organized. So I've already done the work for copy. I'm gonna to go to proxy. Transcoding is when we change one file format to another type of format. Format. We transcode files when we work in Avid Media Cleaner. That's still a workflow that they use. For us, we're not worrying about that. We're creating proxies. Remember, proxies are smaller versions of larger files, so we can edit them either on portable notebook computers or older machines. Now, the preset that I like to use, if I click on this, um, Premiere only recently have they changed the language to say low, medium, high. Um, before they actually used to give you the resolution settings and the resolution settings in low were standard definition. Um, now, if you're using an older machine, that's what you'll want to do. Even if you're the current machine you're working on is a, is a very powerful or newer, but maybe you might have to use a lower resolution machine later on uh, or a lower, an older computer later on. This is where we'd recommend just choose low resolution. Again, this is only when you're working on your files. It is not going to affect your export because when you're ready to export, uh, Premiere will match up the proxy files and will uh, change the low resolution working files that you've been doing and connect them to the higher resolution files because uh, it's, it's the same uh, data. It's just replacing it with the higher one. So when it exports it, you're getting the full HD or 4K resolution. Um, it's really cool that it, and it works really great. I'm just gonna choose uh, low resolution uh, because it's faster. That, that's really it, because it's just gonna be faster to create the lower resolution file in the interest of time. Proxy destination, um, remember I showed you I created a folder called proxy inside of Adobe Premiere. So now I'm gonna choose that. I'm gonna go here, same as project, I'm gonna click choose location. Notice that I can throw it up on my Creative Cloud files on the server. And that all comes with if I create a, um, an account with Creative Cloud. This will be useful if you have your own account. Uh, if you're a professional and you're working on a show, you'll probably have that. And what's really cool is um, if you have your own accounts, then uh, you can work on any kind of computer and create your own custom workspaces. It's, it's uh, got a lot of really neat functions. But for now, we're talking about uh, localized editing. So I'm gonna do choose location and I'm gonna to go to Iowa documentary. I'm gonna go into Premiere Pro and I'm gonna go into proxies. I'll just double click for fun and I'll notice that it's listed on my bar. It says proxies and I'll click choose. And here it even shows it to me there. If I click on it, Iowa documentary Premiere Pro proxies. Voila, that's what I want. All right, now I've, I'm done and I've done everything I need. 
uh, to create my, uh, um, get my project ready to go. I've done the scratch disk, I've done general, I've done ingest settings, so we're all set. Now I can click OK. This is why I also wanted to talk about my renderer right away. All right. Now screen sharing uh, has changed because we're out of that setup menu. And now let's go into Premiere Pro. Here we go, everyone. Dun, 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 dun. Now we're in Premiere Pro. I'm gonna make this a little smaller so I can see my uh, screen because um, Zoom cuts off the top a little bit. Here we go. This is good enough. All right. All right, here we are in Premiere Pro. Now, depending on the version of Premiere Pro you're using, typically it goes into uh, two, or let's say it used to go into two. And the two that it used to go into were either editing or learning. That's sort of the new one, learning. Uh, now that's kind of cool too, is you will have tutorials available to you all here under, uh, that you can look at. And they're short, two minutes, 15 minutes, 60 minutes. Some of this will be a little, you know, be like, hey, this is faster if I do that. You, know? <laughs> you might want to do that. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to assembly. Um, notice we also have editing. Let me show you editing. This is typically the one that most people work with. I, I would say uh, 60, 70% of people go into editing and they never leave. They just kind of do that. If you're learning uh, out of a YouTube tutorials, those people that are self-taught, they just go into editing. And again, they don't know any better. And you know, some of them will explore color and effects. Um, now notice when I click on color, the windows are changing, the window pane. Here's effects, here's audio. Again, focusing on mixing, graphics, this is for my titles, and then I have libraries. So I can build Creative Cloud libraries. And then I even have double arrows. I have all panels, metalogging, production, and then even this edit workspace. Uh, when we get into, um, or those of you that go into the fall with me and we do the intermediate editing, we will talk about editing workspaces. And one thing you'll notice is there is no multi-cam workspace automatically. Uh, we have to create that. We make it. So um, um, in that class in the fall, uh, we talk about customizing our workspaces. But for us, we're going to do assembly. I love assembly. I, I use assembly all the time because it simplifies my workspace and it focuses, it allows me to focus on what I need and uh, you know, which is just getting my, my, uh, my media, all my assets into my project pane and um, also allows me to start to organize into bins. Bins are just the Premiere Pro word for folders. Um, that is a reference to uh, editing from back in the day again, where these giant, you know, like trash cans, these little giant plastic bins were used by editors to store their media inside of. So this uh, naming convention comes from that. So even in Premiere Pro, for those of you who are just starting off in your film career, there you go. You're already in the business, you're already using bins, and now you're learning about the business. So um, uh, assembly. <laughs> so now to go back to assembly. Another reason we, we use assembly, um, if you notice from editing, it's very simplified. Like really where you're looking at this going, well, I only really see like three main windows. Um, and the one that's highlighted is project. So that's my pane. And again, this, we call these different sections panes, P-A-N-E-S, panes. Um, in our assembly, we have the, the, the title of our show, which is the bus driver, media browser, markers, audio clip mixer, and library. And this is just default. This is just what it makes. We're not even gonna go th for, through all of this. Um, over here, we have program pane. And then down here, we have timeline pane. Program has, uh, here ha also has something called source. And those two are interchangeable. If I go into editing, that's really the difference between the two. I have a unique source pane and a program pane already kind of set up. And notice my project pane becomes very, very tiny. And that's really the big difference between the two is that uh, uh, the pane, our main window pane here where we see our clips, the graphical aspect of them, um, it's gonna change uh, whether we are either editing in a timeline 
or just previewing our content in the project pane. But project pane uh, and assembly, I love doing this. I, I mean, I spend sometimes a, a couple weeks in here just organizing my content. Um, it just, again, allows you to focus and doesn't have those extra windows so that, because some people, they're in editing and they do all their work in this tiny little, you know, square. It's like, no, work smarter, not harder. So we're going to do assembly. Now, also because I've organized, um, I don't have to use Media Browser. I'm going to open up Media Browser, show it to you though. But back in the day, we had to use Media Browser because uh, um, Premiere Pro had the ability to read our video files. Up until just two, three years ago, uh, none of our computers, uh, Windows and Mac, couldn't read those video files natively. They just didn't have the proper codecs installed. Now they do, for the most part. Let's say though, like, well, maybe you do Tarango, but I can't. Okay, well, in that case, um, what you do is start with your computer. If you're on a PC, it's probably C. If it's a Chromebook, um, well, I, I know your Chromebook's gonna be using a Windows uh, uh, workspace, so. Click on, I, I believe that uh, your, your main hard drive will be C. Mac, we just call it Macintosh HD. Find your user and then your home folder. And I think Windows will call it home. Uh, on the Mac, it's gonna be whatever you've named it and it'll have a little house icon. So we open that up. Inside of that, we're gonna have our applications folders and our system folders. Now, um, notice that I'm back to this icon view. Um, I can choose this button down here. So I can have list view or windows view, list view or windows view. And I'm, I'm down here on the bottom. Um, I wonder if I can show you guys a, um, so let's see if I can have like a little, my um, cursor, but I think you can see my cursor already. So again, I have either list view or icon view. Let's go back to list view, because this is gonna be familiar to windows and Mac. Um, remember, I had everything on my desktop. So if I open dump desktop, there's Iowa documentary. If I open up Iowa documentary, those were all my folders that I made. And uh, though maybe you couldn't see the, um, you know, my, what I was doing earlier with Premiere Pro and the proxies. Let me show you what happened. If I go to Premiere Pro, there's the bus driver. So this particular file that's created, it's called busdriver.pro or PR, PROJ. Premiere Project is what that stands for. That is not your video file. This particular file is, uh, I call that like the recipe book. I like to use an analogy for cooking. So all your assets are, are kind of like all of your, your different, uh, uh, your, um, um, your, your food and your water and all your, um, your oils and your, um, you know, your seasonings that you're gonna use to make your food. It's all your groceries. The, the PR proj file is the recipe book. So you, you need both of them for Premiere Pro to make sense, you know, but if I were to say, hey, I'd like to eat that, you know, don't bring me the recipe book. It's like, no, I wanna eat it. I don't wanna make it. And so uh, just keep that in mind when you're turning in your, your, pro, your uh, projects, don't give me that project file because it's not gonna do anything. Um, so here's proxies. I just wanted to show that to you. Uh, there's nothing inside right now because I haven't imported anything. But I'll show, I'll show that to you in just a second. Um, now, a couple of ways of getting my content into Premiere Pro. Uh, this way will definitely work. Um, so if I go into video, here are my two, pro, my, my two uh, folders with all my video. Now, I'm going to only do the A6000. And I even dated that just to show you. I call uh, June 28th. So again, you can organize however you want. If I open that up, those are the two files that I want. Now, um, it's not really opening up, or I can't really read them. Now, typically I could, but it's not letting me. The reason why it's becoming in list view, but if I change to icon view or thumbnail view, there we go. Premiere Pro was able to read the, the file. And I even have a slider, I can make that bigger so that, and if I scroll left and right, see, there you go, I'm, I can see the video. And same thing over here, I'm scrolling left and right. Your performance will vary, again, depending on your machine. If you're using that virtual office, it might be stuttering, it might not work very well, just to warn you all. Okay, now I know I want those two files. So 
And because I already organized them in uh, A6000 with the date, all I need to do is uh, right click on that file and choose the word import. And there we go, now it's importing my files. And it automatically created the bin. See, look at that, it made a folder and I have a bin. Another thing that's happening now that uh, you may not be able to see is uh, media, uh, media cleaner um, um, automatically launched. It's an app that I have installed already on my computer. Oh, so I'm going to use like to access folder say, okay. Media, uh, now that media cleaner is running in the background, what it's doing is it's creating proxy files for me automatically. Let me see if it's running. It is. So let me show you what's happening here. Let's, let's go in and show you media encoder or media cleaner. Here we go. Whoops. So this is now media cleaner running. And it's right now creating uh, my uh, proxy files. It's running really slow because I'm also recording video. So it's, my computer is doing a lot and I can, ooh, it's running really fast. If your uh, particular medium cl uh, cleaner or encoder doesn't automatically run, it might have a little play button right here where it says, uh, here's the red file, it says stop, Q. Just hit the green button to start it up and it'll run. And notice mine's running now and it's gonna run in the background. So I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna go back to Premiere Pro. Okay, so here I'm back in Premiere Pro. And if I double click my bin, so this is my folder, but now we call it a bin. Because if I go in, I'm, as I'm looking at my project pane, I have all of these different little buttons down here. It's very similar to Photoshop if you use that. I have list view. I like using list view. It's pretty uh, nice for my organization. Um, I have the ability to do freeform view. I have a zoom, so I can zoom in and out. And then on the right side, I have my new. So I can make a new bin or I can make a new item or some kind of new item or folder or something. If I click on new item, I just want to show it to you really quick. I can make a new sequence, a project shortcut, offline file, adjustment layer. Adjustment layer is going to come in handy when we get into, a, when we talk about special effects, maybe at the end of this semester, if not definitely in the fall. I can do captions, bars and tone, universal counting leader, uh, black video, which is just going to be space, so I can put titles, HD bars and tone, uh, color mats, or transparent video. So I have all of these options. Next to that is my bin. So if I click on this, there you go, new folder. There's nothing inside of that, so I'm just going to delete it. And if I open up my Sony here, those are my, here are my video files. So show that to you all. If I double click either one, it's going to load it inside of source. Notice I have source and program. Nothing in program, but now I have source. And if I push play, cut it down. Okay. I'm, there we go. My video will play. Program will not launch. Notice that next to that it says the word no sequence. Program is intimately tied with sequence. If you don't have a sequence, you will never see program. And of also here, timeline, no sequence. I can't see anything here. Um, timeline, sequence, and program are all related. All related. And we're not gonna see anything until uh, we create a sequence, which we will in just a second. But if I double click also my, my master bus depot shot, um, here we go again, under source, there's my folder. Notice I have these little, uh, uh, little bars here. Some people uh, call that hamburger in media cleaner and avid, but if I click on that, I'm going to get some options. One of the, and at the very bottom, I can quickly jump between my two files. So as I continuously load content into source, I can quickly jump between them. Okay. All right. So let me quickly go. Uh, I, I started to go over the project pane. Uh, those are the buttons down here and I also have a search and I also have a delete. So I can, if I want to get rid of like project or I'm sorry, Jack starts the bus, I can hit this and it's automatically deleted. Let's say, oops, I made a mistake. I didn't want to do that. If you're on a Mac, command Z 
will undo that. Uh, PC is, uh, I think it's uh, Control Z. Look it up <laughs> if you need it. Look it up. Um, all right. Program. So again, let me move this my little windows over here. So here's my program pane. And let's talk about what's in program pane. Here's the left side here. This is my playhead position. So I can actually click and hold here. And if, as long as I'm clicking, I move left and right. I can scrub. So look at that. And look at how the numbers are moving. I have something that says fit. This is just referring to the zoom level uh, of my, of my uh, video. So I can make it smaller. Look at that. It's ten, that's 10% 10 of the size. If I go to 100%, it's bigger than my, than my project pane, so I'm gonna get some scrolling bars here. Um, or make it, I can even go bigger, so I'm now digitally zooming in 200%. I'm just gonna choose fit. So it'll automatically scale the video to fit whatever size my project pane is. So if I decide to you know, customize the size, every time I hit fit, it'll automatically adjust to it. That is not, a, um, it's not going to automatically uh, change your size. It's just, again, right now for our editing purposes. This will come in handy to like 25%, uh, especially when we start to do keyframes and we start, we want to manipulate more content or add other video files. Uh, these two little buttons here, drag video only and drag audio only. This is like, let's say we're, uh, we want to bring in some content into our project and I only want the video and I don't want the audio or mess with it, then I can just grab it here. I'll show you. If I grab that, see, the little hand turns into a knuckle. And then when I bring the project or the video in, it'll only bring the video and it'll be silent. And the same is true if I only drag audio. I'll only bring the sound, no video. Half here, this represents the resolution. Uh, so I don't even, if, if uh, let's say I forget to do proxies or I don't do proxies, this is another way I can uh, choose a smaller resolution of my, of my content, of my file, again, so I can run smoother. So right now it automatically chose half. It just did it. Here is my uh, settings, so my wrench. I have all kinds of options, composite video, waveform, alpha, um, playback resolutions. So th this is my controller for the source. We're going to talk about that for, uh, in terms of color correction too later on. And my last one here, this is my in and out duration. Um, the numbers here represent time code. Notice I have one, two, three, four separate categories. And uh, we read those from right to left. Okay, so the 12 here that I'm looking at, that represents frames, 12 frames. I shot this. If I look at my project pane under frame rate, I see that I shot this at 23.976 frames per second, roughly 24 frames. So 12, this is 12 of 24. So frames, the next one is seconds. Remember all of these is how many frames are there per second of, of time of, of the, that I shot. So this represents 11 seconds. So right now we're at 11 seconds with 12 frames. And the frame is the smallest single unit in video. Frames, seconds, the next one, zero. Minutes, how many minutes do we have? Zero. And then after that, hours. So it's frames, seconds, minutes, hours. Okay, that's how it is. Uh, there is a fifth, because what would come after hours? Days. Yes, there are films that are now days and there is a film right now that is a 30-day film it's a swedish film I, I forgot what it's called you can look it up it does last a whole month it's 30 days straight um i believe the trailer is coming up is a two-hour trailer <laughs> and that's just to get the trailer for the film itself so um yeah people are making movies that are uh month long imagine sitting through that right now, these little buttons here are all gonna be our, um, uh, how we make our selections. So we'll look at the first one. This is marker. So if I click on that, it created this little green guy. Um, if I double click that, 
I get this. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but it does give me the ability to create a, uh, uh, give myself notes, um, except, you know, or, you know, like, oh, I, I want to make sure to give myself this note later on. We'll talk about that in more detail later. Um, these two little guys here, they look like little parenthetical statements. That's where I choose my content. That's where I mark in and I mark out. So I can film for 10 seconds, but let's say I only want seven seconds and I want to get specific. I want to, I want maybe only this part of my clip to this part of my clip. So that's what in and out does. It selects that section and will only bring that part into our sequence into our main project. It doesn't delete the other stuff, but it only brings that stuff in. And if we look at mark in when I mouse over it um, and I leave it alone, it says mark in and in parentheses, it gives me a, the letter I. Well, if we look at our keyboard, that's what that's talking about. That's our shortcut in. Well, here's mark out. What do we think our shortcut for that is? Well, it's O and look at our keyboard. It's right next to each other in and out. So those are our two first shortcuts and that's interchangeable between Mac PC in and out. And this is also pretty standard across most editing software. We have then go to in. Now that all that means is let's say I'm reviewing footage and I want my, my playhead. The playhead is just where, where in my uh, video um, I'm, uh, my, I'm uh, looking at, in my source or in my program. That's all the playhead is, here in my video it is. But let's say that I want the playhead to jump to the end point. That's what this button does here. Go to in. This is called step back, which lets me move a frame at a time. This is my play, stop, step forward. This goes to my out point automatically. And these next two buttons are my insert edit and my overwrite edit. On Premiere, insert edit shortcut is comma, override is period. What that means is it's just how my content gets placed. It is uh, uh, the, uh, an aspect that we call three point editing. The last one here is, uh, let's say I want to export out a still or uh, for my project. If I click this button here, I create a flash frame and I can use that as uh, you know, for my video project or I can export that out and email it to somebody if I want. So that's what these buttons mean here. And again, you can review that at your leisure. I have a plus sign here that allows me to go in and edit my button editor. Uh, the only one I might want to add will be my proxy, you know, because I did, you know, create them. So I'll, that's my toggle proxy and I'll say, okay. And now if I click that, it's going to play my proxies instead of my full project or my full frame video. And if it's blue, that means I'm working with proxies. If it's the white color, that means I'm working on my full size. Okay, let's see if, um, what else we got to cover. Project pane. Okay, now for our project uh, and for your own um, um, workflow benefit, I'm going to also talk about subclips. So I mentioned in and out. Now. Uh, one other aspect of editing in Premiere um, is notice that my windows have these uh, blue boxes. The blue boxes indicate uh, what is active in Premiere. So if this, for example, my source here, if that's selected in blue and I go to my keyboard and if I look at my keyboard in the top left, I have the escape key. Under escape key, I have that little wiggly line, right? Uh, Spanish speakers might say, well, it looks like an Enya, uh, but for everyone else, we call that tilde, T-I-L-D-E. And if I tap that, notice that my project pane goes full screen. So that's a really great way to go to preview my content in a full screen format. And I hit it again to go back small. So that's tilde underneath the escape key. Now these windows or these uh, um, highlights, again, indicating what is active in my window, um, my keyboard has a great shortcut that uh, I want you all to um, you know, start using immediately. And that's JKL. Uh, those are our scan buttons. If I tap J, 
my my uh, playhead will start playing backwards. If I tap K, it will pause. If I tap the letter L, it will play forward. K is pause, K is back. Pause. See, L forward, K pause, K back. J, K, L. So built right into every every computer is already a controller, a hardware controller, which is awesome. You don't have to use your keyboard here. Pause and play. You can just do J, K, and L. Although I'm going backwards. I went L, K, J. Now, I call that edit claw because we have our hand here on our J, K, L, and I like to use these three fingers. But if we look at our keyboard and the way that uh, Premiere is laid out, but well, we have I and O immediately above um, those JKL. So it makes it easier to tap I. And notice I just tapped I and I have set my first endpoint. And the way that Premiere distinguishes between what is inside and what is outside is this gray. So I can either drag or let's say I play ahead a little bit. I K and I pause. And let's say that's all I want. JKL. I want that out point. I tap the letter O. And now look at that. I have my in point and my out point. So now I'm editing. Now I'm starting to make conscious decisions in terms of what I want to keep and what I want to exclude. I do not have to get be very, very precious. In other words, I don't have to get it exactly. You know, uh, again, that's the advantage of uh, what we call nonlinear editing because I can trim still. I can still trim. So I, I always just like to get around the area. And in fact, I like to give myself even maybe a half a second before and a half a second after, because you know, being able to trim is always very useful. Uh, you tend uh, to never get from the very beginning. Sometimes you do, but for the most part, we put an endpoint some po somewhere after the beginning of the file. All right, so here we go. We have this one section. Um, now, one thing I'm going to do uh, is I can start editing and I can start making my project just by dragging this down into where it says drop media here to create sequence. I can make a sequence automatically, but we're going to be a little bit more mindful and, and talk about subclips before we do that. Now, subclips are going to be smaller versions of your main clips. And, and again, this helps you for your organization. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another bin and I'm going to call that subclips. Now, depending on your show, if you have a very complicated show, you might put that subclip inside like this. I just drag and dropped it. And if I open that up, I can see I have subclips in here. There's nothing inside of that at the moment, but I can start uh, organizing my subclips inside of maybe the content that I was shooting in. Is it at all, again, it's all up to you. What might be useful though, is to create subclips based on maybe where they belong in your show. You know, and, and again, you can name that. So I can call this subclips. And what I did to rename that, it was just like before. I click once, pause, click again. And then I click outside this time because I don't, I put my cursor at the end of S and then I hit space bar. So I'm going to put subclips bus depot. Because I'm, I want to stay as organized as possible. I'm going to grab this though and move it outside. So I'm just going to grab it, drag down, drag down. And notice that it was a, I get that, you know, circle with a line through it. I'm going to keep going down to where it disappears and I let go. And now my sub clip is outside of my main folder or my main bin. Now a workflow that works in the past is I load the clip that I want to edit. And this time let's do master here, the master bus depot, because I already started with my in and out point. And what I'm gonna do, because that's already loaded, I click once on my sub clip like this, okay? I click once and uh, with that selected, I can now work over here. Notice when I push pause and play without having to click on anything else, sub clips is still selected. The reason why that's still selected is what we want is as we create sub clips and we generate them, they will automatically get put inside of that bin. This is why we do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to clip and if I go to the second option, it says make subclip and let's look at our, our next uh, shortcut, which is command U, PCs I believe will be control U. So let's click on command U and I get my first window. 
Um, if you can't see it, it says name and it says master depot mp4 uh, dot subclip 001. Now you can name this whatever you want. I tend to keep the word subclip 001 in there and delete everything to the left of it. So I'm going to delete everything and I'm going to call this uh, bus uh, depot master. Underneath, I have this option that says restrict trims to subclip boundaries. What I suggest is you take that off right now as you're learning, uh, because what that means is it creates a, an, it's going to create another clip and you can only work within, within those boundaries. But maybe right now, as you're still learning, you're like, Ooh, I wish I would have, you know, created a subclip with just a little bit more, you know, on either side on my endpoint or my out point. Um, by removing that check mark, this will allow us to trim outside of that. And I'll show you trimming in just a second. So I'm going to uncheck that for now and I'm going to say, okay. Um, now, if we look at our uh, project pane, we'll see that under subclips bin, see, I have now my bus depot subclip. It got, it automatically placed itself in that bin. And that's because I selected that bin before I did anything else. And, but if you notice even, the file that gets created, it's slightly different than the master clip itself. Notice that it has like these little squigglies on the end. Well, that looks like the in and out point. And, and that's all that's there. It's, it's a visual indicator to show you that this is a subclip. It also under media start, media end, tells you that it starts in a, and ends in a tighter space than your main clip. In your media duration where, uh, but master depot is 1112, um, it could be shorter now, and that's all it's here to tell you. I'm sorry, I, I, it's in your video in, video out point, <laughs> not your media duration. Media duration, because uh, this is referencing your main clip, we're, we want to talk about this part right here. See, this is shorter than your in and out point overall. Here we go, clip start, clip end, clip duration. Two seconds, nine frames video info. And notice when I'm in this um, list view, I have all this information by scrolling left to right, which is really, really cool. Because even if I'm, if I'm working, I can do stuff like, um, especially as an assistant editor, you're going to go through and check off like good, good. Some of you, that's going to be your job. You're just going to metadata and choose like, okay, this is a good file. That's not a good file. Or you can even select to hide them by doing that, you know? Um, the, uh, the content then, uh, we have to go back in and choose show all files to bring it back. But, uh, this becomes very, very useful as we work in our projects. But I, here's my bus depot. I just want to show that it's only now two seconds long or just that one section. All right. So, um, now, let's go back to, um, let's do another subclip because what's really cool is I can create subclips um, that uh, are um, within the same clip. It's really, really cool. So let's go in here and I'm going to choose another endpoint. Uh, point. This will not in any way affect my uh, other subclip that becomes its own entity, but I'm going to select that folder again. Remember, I want to select the subclips folder, do in and out, and then at this point, let's do a shortcut this time. Command U. No, oh, I have to select it. Whoops. See, the project pane wasn't selected, or the source master depot wasn't selected, which is why Command U didn't work. Now it'll work, and this time I'm going to create subclip. Let's call this um, uh, bus depot master two. And, and what's cool is the subclip even adds a number to it. So it went from zero, zero, one on the other one. Now it's zero, zero, two, and I'm going to click OK. So now I have two subclips all in my source. And again, I'm not even in editing. I'm just building all of my subclips. Uh, and, and again, I can leave these as is and the order, if I open that up, I'm just going to open this so you can see that. There they are. 
um, everything is then listed as necessary, or, or, or excuse me, everything, um, uh, my subclips are all in their order, whether I change between icon view or not. And so, and it's pretty neat because I even have these, these types of sorting, because I didn't even show you guys this that right here, but I can go user order, list view sort, and if I do list view sort, that means it goes in that alphabetical order. Um, here's my hide. So let's go back to uh, that clips. Whoops, let's go back to from the very beginning. Now, let's say that I want to look at my list view and I can only see those. I'm like, well, how do I get back to my main folder? Well, that's what this little arrow is for. This moves us up to levels. Here we go, whoops. See, I'm going to go back. And let's do what's hidden. Oh, here we go. Let's look at hide now. Oh, wait, I'm not doing it right. Or my shots that are good. Did I, I think I might have selected both of them as good, didn't I? Maybe. All right. Let's see my shot. At this point, I guess, because I only have the two, I'm not really seeing anything else. Yeah, let's look at that. Yeah, because I'm not really seeing anything else. Just that they were good and that I had them under hide. Okay. All right. Either way, let's go back here. Okay. Um, let's, uh, let me take a quick uh, break and find the rest and uh, look at my notes and then uh, I'm gonna add this or add an addendum to this uh, in just a second. So this is gonna be part one and uh, we'll come back to part two where we start, uh, let me see, um, we talked about navigation. We'll start building our sequences and then doing our exports.